So welcome everyone to the CPP Group Talk here in the European Parliament on skyrocketing energy prices. How is that impacting uh, industry, uh, businesses uh, across Europe? How are they adapting? How can the EU help them adapt to that? And also in the context of this green transition and green deal, how do you balance all of this? Uh, not easy, a very tough nut to crack, and that's why we're here with uh, Tom Berenson uh, of the Netherlands, Christian Ela uh, of uh, Germany, and Maria Graça de Cavallo in the middle from Portugal, who are uh, all on the Committee on Industry, Research, and Energy. Um, let's start with Tom. Uh, you authored this industry strategy report. Uh, how do we strike that balance between the Green Deal uh, and with dealing with this economic crisis right now, with the skyrocketing energy prices. We yeah. didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. What we do with this report, uh, as European Parliament, we tell the European Commission there cannot be a Green Deal without an industry strategy. We cannot go through the energy transition with all our industry without facilitating policy to make sure that our industries can go through this uh, transition and remain competitive while doing so. Right, so what does that mean then? How do, you, how do you do that? That means that if on one hand you demand from industry that they're climate neutral by 2050, that on the other hand you need to make sure that the right infrastructure is in place, uh, uh, hydrogen networks for example, yeah. uh, pipelines we need, um, that the right infrastructure is in place for them to do so. That right. means that uh, we need to invest in key technologies that are needed. Uh, in certain industrial processes that are not there yet. Yeah. Uh, so there's a real role when it comes to an industry policy uh, to meet the goals we set with uh, a Green Deal. Maria, how can we... Uh, uh, there are, you have examples of disruptive technologies in dealing and helping uh, sectors like steel, like cement, right? There are many examples that we have been financing through our Horizon uh, program. The, is the research and innovation program in Europe, one of the, the, the biggest in the world. And uh, on the process industry, there are fantastic uh, uh, projects that, uh, for example, financed the development of microwave uh, technologies for to be used in cement, ceramic, hmm. and uh, the steel industry. And uh, one consortium that uh, I'm aware that I have been reading involving uh, German, Spain, Portugal, nine countries, but uh, industry from these countries where they, they are replacing the traditional combustion uh, with flames to, to uh, do the, the um, change of phasing, on the, for example, on the ceramic, and to replace by microwave technology that leads, for example, to energy efficiency of 40%. So we need disruptive technologies. One of the secrets to do this transition uh, and have industry, competitive industry in Europe, while we do the green transition is through technology, is through research, is through innovation, is through the investment in research but also on pilot scale mm. in demonstration so we have technologies that allows our industry to do the transition and to keep being competitive at the world scene so the transition and it takes time right so christian uh, how today and tomorrow how are businesses large and small across europe going to continue operating without us having gas rationing I mean, what had been said, I mean, the way to go forward is innovation and technology, first of all, mm -hmm. because we have to reduce demand and not just by short, uh, shorting the supply and simply shut down <laughs> capacities. Mm -hmm. uh, we need technology solution, but that is the mid and long term, but we should and have invested in that. The second one is, is a variety of instruments where we can um, address the, the prices and send price signals. And that is um, infrastructure. Yeah. I mean, the, the price is not just um, right now on demand and supply. The price is the expectations from the market, whether we can or cannot deepening the European electricity market, uh, the question of gas infrastructure, which then led to in future to an infrastructure for hydrogen. And right. so, so if that, you, that means pipelines, that means energy grid, uh, pipelines, grids. grid yeah. uh, transformation stations, it means transnational infrastructures. Mm. 
and that is lacking. And how important that is, you see that, um, for example, the gas price and the energy prices now in some member states are decoupled from the average in Europe, simply because of the perception that in case of um, a lack of supply, in case of um, a solidarity needed, in case of um, energy needed transferred from one country to another, they're in deprived region. They're not well connected. Right. So a strong price signal for the very moment would be to take the InvestEU plan, put 100 billion on the table, said we're going to do gas pipelines, hydrogen pipelines, electricity pipelines. And the market perception would be the connections get better, the supply is flowing, solidarity, solidarity mechanisms are working, and you see would see an immediate effect, um, a, a signal to the markets that we can do better. So right now mm -hmm. it is yet again on Europe and deepening the European energy market. And, and, and how optimistic are you that we can break this dependence on Russian gas? And we're, we're kind of forced to right now, right? I mean, let's be honest, I mean, our bot is hanging out of the window. So mm -hmm. in a way, um, what had been taken long, uh, for example, a discussion whether we have um, a pipeline or electricity connections between the Iberian Peninsula and France, that's yeah. been always hampered because French national interest said, no, we, we don't like that. Now we all know if we want to land on LNG gas, where we have the capacities in the south, and we need that in Central Europe and in, in Eastern Europe, um, there is a European interest and no longer this kind of um, mm. bullying of national interest. And yes. so you see movement all of a sudden. That is a discussion which had been taking place on the Iberian Peninsula for 15 years. Yeah. And all of a sudden we are close to the fact that Europe says, OK, we pay for it, we do. Yeah, yeah, and because we've been talking for years about energy union, yes. right? When, when, when? Well, now we're forced to uh, by the circumstances that exist now. And that is part of this idea of strategic dependency, interdependency, isn't yeah. it, Tom? No, absolutely. I mean, in, in the COVID crisis, we already saw that we were way too dependent uh, on other parts of the world when it came right. to medicines, medical supplies, etc. Currently, we see that we're way too dependent on Russia when it comes to energy. Um, but there are other uh, issues, other things we're also dependent on other parts of the world currently for our economy of the future. Look right. at chips. Yeah. We only produce about 8% of the chips in, in Europe. Um, batteries, lithium, is for 60% coming from uh, China. Those kind of dependencies we need to tackle as well. And we, we are, through the EU, there are these programs, right, EU funded to, uh, uh, to make more chips, to make more yeah. batteries, is this going far enough, or what do you think? Uh, well, the chips is, is a, 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 a strong proposal. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's huge, uh, what, what is proposed. Uh, but on other uh, parts, I think we, we need more of those, those kind of proposals. Uh, but they need to work. I mean, mm. you cannot propose a, a lot of money and then um, uh, the mark will solve everything. It's not how it works. But if you look at uh, what was pre presented today by... Uh, uh, Commission President Ursula von der Leyen on the Critical Raw Materials Act. I think that's a good idea. That's also something the Parliament calls for in, in my report. Because we are too dependent uh, on China for lithium. We are too dependent on China for raw, uh, rare earth materials. Right. And so the one thing you don't want is to be dependent uh, on someone you don't want to be dependent on. So this, this has been on the rails for a while, but you're saying that this has to be sped up then, right? Yeah. yeah. It needs to be speed up, but, but it's two things. It's one, it's uh, make sure these dependencies aren't there. And secondly, investing a lot in innovation, in research and technology. Yeah. Because it, we cannot do everything ourselves. We will remain dependent for certain things on other parts of the world. And it's not bad as long as we have things, IDs, technologies that other parts of the world want from us. And that's why research and innovation is so important that on the geopolitical negotiation table, mm -hmm. we have something to put on there that other right. ones from us. Maria, what about, um, there's an example, uh, because you're, you're also uh, on the Internal Markets uh, Committee, and, and what about textiles in Portugal? Uh, yes, textiles is a good example. Um, 
of a sector that has done a, a huge transformation, uh, um, I would say, to become more sustainable. Had to, uh, because they got crowded out by yes. lots of producers in other parts of the world. The world. So. And uh, the textiles is very important, for example, in Portugal. They, uh, the, the employment represents 18%, is 9% mm. of our economy, and we represent uh, about 5% of the whole textile uh, in the EU. And uh, there was a, a lot of pressure also from the consumers so that the sector becomes more, more and more sustainable. So they have uh, invested uh, in the past uh, 10 years, I would say, uh, uh, heavily on uh, research, innovation, uh, transformation of their process, modernization mm. uh, with the circular economy, also digitalization of the process, uh, using different, more uh, added value materials, so from the traditional textile to um, mm. uh, technical textile. So they, in Portugal, has been a tremendous transformation. Now we are worried because it's a sector that is uh, also hit by the energy crisis. Yes, it's energy uh, intensive and, uh, too. Isn't yes. It? Yeah. So uh, they have decreased with this process, the, they are energy intensive, but it's still dependent on the gas for the process, some parts of the process. So it's something that uh, we need to give an answer to the industry. Most of the member states, like my own, have given uh, answers on an energy price to the vulnerable domestic consumers, but not yet for the industry. And that is very important that we also have uh, as politicians an answer to the industry on the uh, energy prices so that they can continue to produce in Europe because we need industry in Europe because they mean jobs and we need the jobs uh, yeah. at European. What about, um, and this was I think uh, part of uh, Madame von der Leyen's uh, State of the Union speech uh, this week um, about the, the, the problem of regulation, about rules slowing us down. And, and Christian, you've, you've talked about a regulatory moratorium on some industries. Can you talk a little bit about that and, um, and your reaction to uh, what Madame von der Leyen said? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, wh what's the job? We, for the next generation, we have to deliver on 2030 on the CO2 reduction, on the climate change. The fit for And 55, that is not going yeah. to happen through a energy crisis we are facing. This is... We can't tell our children we, we had an energy crisis and so we skipped somehow climate change. Yeah. It doesn't work. Can't do that. But what yeah. we need is now we need to stop additional burden for the industry. And that derives directly from the industry uh, strategy Tom had been developing. Look to sectors, not just the overall discussion, to sectors. You go to the chemical industry. Mm. You ask them to take um, carbon out of combustion means 10 times more electricity needed. Big supply questions in terms of uh, where the hydrogen is coming from. They say, fine, we do. And now the commission pops up with a regulation saying, oh, we want to regulate 21,000 chemical products. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you can hit them once. Yeah. With a second hit, you kill them. Yeah. And I think we should be um, realistic enough to say we can't simply what others are saying from the left and from the right, now we ignore climate change. No. But what we can do is that we have a moratorium. We think for a time, for two or three years, saying no much more burden on the industry. They have to cope with the present situation. Uh, that is enough. Um, we need innovation, but we don't need more regulation. And this is definitely not the end of the world when the Commission is stopping or slowing down producing regulation. Yeah, can you, can you add anything to that, Tom, on what your, with the um, industrial strategy? Yeah, well, <clears throat> Christian mentioned the, uh, the sectors, and, yeah. and that is indeed crucial in the, in the strategy. Uh, what we uh, ask from, from the Commission is present the pathways of these different sectors to go to climate neutral while remaining competitive. Mm. What is needed? What is needed in terms of uh, energy infrastructure? What is needed in terms of technology? Uh, what is needed in terms of uh, skills um, and bring that picture uh, uh, to the parliament so that we can discuss annually, okay, where are we on that path to climate neutral? Yeah. Uh, are we still competitive? Do we need to adapt things? Yeah. Uh, I think that is crucial and you can only do that by sector because there's no such thing as 
one industrial policy that works in every single sector. Yeah. They're all different. You yeah. got to you got to tailor it. Now, and what about small and medium sized enterprise? Let's let's talk for a minute about that. How does that industrial strategy work for them? But they're crucial. Yeah. I mean, they're crucial because uh, the European Commission rightly mentioned ecosystems. I mean, it's not two or three big companies in a sector. It's a couple of big companies and then a whole supply chain of all kinds of uh, small and medium sized uh, enterprises that are crucial in this supply chain to deliver in the end what we need in our, in our society. Um, so they're crucial. And uh, it's partly it's, it's uh, the regulatory burden that we need to address for, for small and medium sized uh, companies, especially in these uh, times. Uh, it's partly facilitating them also in the infrastructure they need, in the skills they need, the working force, uh, the workforce they, uh, they need, the innovations they need. Uh, and in my view, also uh, promoting better cooperation between small and medium sized enterprises and, for example, universities mm. uh, or other knowledge institutes that have knowledge, that have IDs, that have technologies on the table um, that uh, can be introduced by, by uh, small and medium sized enterprises. There so, was, uh, and uh, what about this windfall profits tax that people are talking about? How could that uh, address this, this transition and perhaps make it easier for SMEs? Maria, do you have any ideas on that? The windfall tax is still a, a point to be discussed. Uh, personally, I'm uh, um, not enthusiastic about the idea because it okay. means that we are uh, increasing taxes on our enterprises uh, that need to be competitive, that need to invest in infrastructures, in research and innovation, in skills. So there is a lot of investment that is required for our industry and our companies to be uh, competitive uh, and we need to preserve that because industry is going through a lot of uh, strengths from the uh, international competition, the need to digitalize, the need to do a, a reconversion on an energy term. So uh, before we go to the easiest solution that is more taxes, we need to look for other options. Okay. And Anyway, uh, uh, any solution should be articulated and seen at European level and not member state by member state. Okay, Christiane, any thoughts on that? I mean, the, the idea of that is to shift the money that is uh, made, these huge amounts of money that are made by energy companies to other parts of the economy and, and, and people. Sure, but that might be not a solution for now. I mean, just yeah. imagine, I mean, you go to your local tax authorities and now, um, if you look to the to the electricity market, for example, the, there you can see the trades, mm. and you can judge what would be windfall profits, or you do have kind, some kind of judgment. Yeah. What do you do with the thousands, if not millions, of contracts companies individually doing over the counter? Mm -hmm. So I, I I don't expect that is a short time solution. I mean, we have to make sure that there is no um, market distortion by by profits which are disproportional. Yeah. Uh, that's yes. And it, there should be a certain um, a very problematic topic, a certain fairness in all. But to expect that we are going to start to allocate that in um, December and then we're going to spend that in March, uh -huh. uh, that's not very likely. Yeah. So, I mean, it might be an additional uh, means um, to, if you, if you really would see market distortions caused by, uh, by over-proportional profits, yes. But is that bringing the price down for the moment? No. And does that give that the bazooka, so to say, in mm. January to help a glass production company or whatsoever. No, that's not going to happen. That takes uh, longer. Right. I see that as um, a part of the portfolio of instruments, yeah. but that not as the golden solution, which is creating the 127 billion euro the commission had been referring to. I right. mean, taxation okay. is complicated. It's national member states issue. And you're going to see the first results from my point of view perhaps in the course of the next years, but that won't be the, an answer to the high prices in the winter. Can I get just a quick lightning round from, from all of you? I think you know, we're, we're reaching out and speaking out to uh, businesses large and small that are worried. They are seriously worried about how they're going to fare through this winter. And uh, how can we reassure them that we're doing what we can 
to make it easier for them to lighten the load. Uh, Maria. We are analyzing all the um, options. There are options that for sure are uh, very important, like the, the energy saving. We really need to save more uh, electricity like we have been saving gas, and uh, we have already very good results. Um, we have to continue the diversification of uh, uh, the sources of gas, and yep. still there is uh, a lot that can be done uh, on, on that. Uh, to build the remaining infrastructures that takes some more time and uh, in a crisis um, we can intervene in the market if this intervention in the market is well designed, is well thought about the uh, consequence, it is temporary and can be reverted. So are conditions that uh, um, it's important in intervening in a market. And, okay. But we will find a solution, uh, the European institutions, uh, that we can uh, in certain way uh, uh, lower the, the increase of the prices of electricity yeah. and at the same time keeping the competitiveness of our industry that is very, very important. Okay. And the help to the consumers and to the vulnerable domestic consumers should be extended to companies, to industries, mm -hmm. special SMEs, and that every member state should do it. Okay, Tom, uh, your, the industrial strategy that you helped to, that you authored, um, how can that address this? Well, we could be climate neutral next year in the European Union if all energy intensive industries would shut down. And sometimes you get the feeling that some parties here in the European Parliament would like to choose that option. But for us as EPP, we will always choose to have the best and the cleanest technologies and industries in Europe producing what we need in the future and let them remain competitive. And we will do everything we can okay. to make sure that that will happen. Uh, Christian, just very, very quickly, how do we reassure that there are companies that are hurting right now okay, and they're we, scaling back now? <clears throat> but we have to sort the problem a little bit. The first step is made. I think physically the molecules for the first time we can say if that is not a very harsh winter, there will be, won't be a shutdown. Yeah. I mean, the worry we had weeks ago, literally. So the first message is um, most likely if there is not a harsh winter, no shutdown. Secondly, um, I think what, what would send messages to the market and bring the price down is simply to say investment in infrastructure, more transnational infrastructure, solidary mechanism as it had been on the gas uh, storage. And I think the third message is not just related to um, the prices. The third message is related to the industry. We are not doing just the green stuff. Mm. We, what we could send them is we don't put additional burden on you. You could um, talk about um, dropping um, energy taxes. I mean, each member state, if you go to the gasoline station, the bulk of the price is taxes, mm. not costs. All right. So I think there are um, instruments at hand for the member states, as Maria, Maria Radley is saying, with a limited, uh, for a limited time, but quite drastically. And we have seen that, that we had been using that for consumers over the summer. If the, the, the situation goes on like that, I th personally think that dropping energy taxes is the means at hand for national states to cope with that. It's difficult for national budgets, um, but it's not putting a burden on others, playing billiard, doing complicated things. The state for a while has to go out of the energy prices. Um, get the taxes down, and from my point of view, that is an, let's say an interim solution which will help us over the winter. And then we see in the summer that the prices will go on, the price signals in terms mm. of infrastructure um, will send the right message to the markets. And let's hope for a winter of solidarity as well. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much, Christian, Maria, Tom. Thanks to all of you for having listened in and watched. Uh, this was an EPP group discussion here, a talk at the European Parliament. Uh, if you'd like to tweet uh, something, uh, think, uh, keep in mind the at EPP group handle and look uh, for eppgroup.eu for any further information. I'm Chris Burns. Thanks for watching.